We got it. It's finally here. Let's talk about Fabric Data Gen. All right, we found ourselves back in the Gen once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about Fabric Data Gen finally here. So in a recent-ish, I guess, version of Fabric, the data gen was finally added so we can now basically i mean in theory we could delete all of our assets folders the block states or the models all of it everything can just go but let's not you know go too crazy for the time being let's first of all jump in take a look at some of the things that we can generate specifically in the data files and then we'll see so in the tutorial mode package we're going to make a new package called data gen instead of there for the time being, we will need one class called mod data generation. There you go. And this is going to look as follows. This is going to implement the data generator entry point. Extremely important. Then hover over this, implement the method, this one right here. And this is extremely important as well. So now that we have this particular entry point, you know, implemented the interface here, we need to go to our, our fabric mod JSON file right here and we need to add that entry point. So we need to, need to copy this guy over here. We need to make a fabric dash data gen. And this is under dot data gen. And this is called mod data generation. Let me just get this. There you go. And then this is extremely important that we have this. If we don't have this, it's not going to work. Second thing we need that is absolutely necessary. In our build.gradle file, we want to add below the process resources right here. We want to add the following. I will copy this over because it is hopefully always going to look the same. We want a data output right here. So this is the string. It's going to add this to source main generated and then also going to look for this. So we need to do this and we need to add this. This is going to add a new Gradle task. Um, I guess not yet uh, after we've uh, reloaded Gradle. That, that's, that's a fair point, actually. We need to reload Gradle, of course. And then it should add a new task for us there. This is going to add a new task. Let's just see. Eight seconds shouldn't be very long. And you can see then, there we go, run data gen. So now we have a new task that is going to run exactly this entry point and this method. And anything we add to this method, well, we can then use to, well, generate any sort of JSON file, basically. Now, first of all, I'm going to show you loot tables and recipes, and then we'll proceed from there. So let's start with the mod loot table generator. There you go. Now this will extend the simple fabric loot table provider. If we actually middle mouse button click on this, you can see it comes from the fabric loot table provider, which actually does pretty much the same thing as the vanilla one. You know, there's like a few differences here in both of these, but we want to actually extend this class, implement the accept method, and then also create a constructor matching super. For the constructor right here, I want to actually delete this and I want to make a loot table context that is specific to loot table context types that and I want to do blocks. Now you're probably going to need multiple loot table generator classes if you also want to, you know, add different JSON files like loot table JSON files for chests and commands and all of this other craziness, then you're probably going to need one for each of those. However, that shouldn't be too crazy at that stage. When you have this class, what do you do with it? Well, in the mod data generation, you just simply say fabric data generator dot add provider mod loot table generator colon colon new. That is it. That is all you need to do. And now the accept method is run when we also run the new Gradle task. Now for the loot table, I will only basically show you one loot table in this case. And then I'll also show you where you can look up all of the vanilla loot tables as well. So if you actually start typing, you can use we're going to use the identifier builder by consumer over here. Just sounds very complicated, but we're just going to use that parameter dot accept. And then here we're basically giving it a, an identifier and then a builder. Now the builder is actually going to be fairly straightforward. So the identifier is going to be tutorial mod mod ID, of course. And then this is going to be under blocks slash dogwood underscore planks. So we're going to make our planks basically have a loot table associated with them. Now the builder here is going to be very easy indeed. And that is the block loot table generator. This one right here from net Minecraft data server that drops and you can already see aha. Now you almost don't need anything else. You can see if we use the block loot table generator, you can actually have all sorts of different ways that things drop lapis or leaves 
you have the ore drops, slabs, because all of those are special. And if you don't have anything special, you can just have a normal drops one. Where you can see, we're basically just having the normal block that we define. So this is actually this one right here. You can also have a drop with silk touch over here and then an item. You also can provide a loot number provider over here. You can even do a condition builder as well. So absolutely craziness what you can do here. And then here you can also do the silk touch with also a loot number provider. So there is a bunch of different things that you can do here. I just cannot recommend enough. Just try out some stuff and see what it generates. And then pretty much you should be able to generate almost any different type of loot table here. Now we want to use the drops method in this case. Nope, absolutely not. Not with property, just the normal drops method. And then this is going to be mod blocks dot dog wood planks. There we go. And that is literally it. That is all we need. Now we go to the Gradle tab. We run data gen. Now what I want you to pay full, uh, close attention to is that up here it is now says data gen. Every time we now click the run button, it's going to run this task. However, we can change this in just a moment. Let's first of all close the Gradle window over here. It has gone through build successful. That is very good. We can see, you know, we have new two new files in here in the generated folder has generated data and there it is. Tutorial mod loot tables blocks dogwood planks .json, and this pretty much looks like it will drop our dogwood planks. Now, as I've said, if we now were to click this again, you can see it would run data gen again, which of course is usually not something you want. You can literally just go to this drop down menu and choose run client. And there you go. That is that is literally all that we need in this case. And we have already added the loot table. Let's proceed to the recipe. So a new class over here mod recipe generator. And this will extend the fabric recipe provider. There you go. Let's hover over this. Implement methods, generate recipes. Hover over this again. Create constructor matching super. Now this is going to have... I'm going to actually copy over two examples. And then I'm going to copy over a third example. Because that's like quite long. So you can see what you can do is when you type in inside of the method over here. Offer. You can actually see all the different ways of recipes that you can offer the consumer here. So blasting recipe, you can add a bed recipe, a reversible compacting uh, recipe. I actually have one example of this, a bark block recipe. I'm not even 100% sure. I think that this is for the, yeah, this is for the strippable, I think, something like that. You can see there's quite a few different already existing recipes that you can very, very easily mimic here. And we can see that this is an offer smelting. This is offer reversible compacting recipe. So basically, I can take nine tanzanite and make a tanzanite block. And then I can take one tanzanite block and make one uh, nine tanzanite from it. Very interesting indeed that this is like just normally there. You can also do a... Um, this is not a slotless actually. This is a shapeless. So you can also add a shapeless recipe right here. That also works. However... What if you want to make a shaped recipe? Well, that is a little more complicated. That is why I'm going to copy it over. But overall, it is pretty much going to look the same every time. So you want to use a shaped recipe JSON builder. You can also take a look at all of the different methods inside of there. So if I middle mouse button click on this method right here, for example, so we will actually be able to see, you know, that it also uses the shaped recipe builder JSON dot create and so on and so forth. So that also all works. So in this case, we are going to craft an eight ball with this pattern. So all tanzanite all around and then in the middle an iron ingot. You can see this, of course, by using the input method here. The criterion basically just means, okay, what criterions have to be met so that you will get this particular item in your recipe book. That's going to be, you know, either has iron or has tanzanite. And then down here, you're just offering it once again to the exporter with the recipe name for the eight ball. That's pretty much all you do. It's not that crazy, all things considered. It shouldn't be too overly complicated here in this case. And then, we, of course, we still want to add this to our generator over here. So fabric generator, add provider. And this is the mod recipe generator, colon, colon, new. Very nice indeed. Let's run the generator once again. So let's switch this to run generator or run data gen. Let's just let this run through. It shouldn't take very long in these, you know, in these instances, because we are not adding like thousands of thousands of, you know, different recipes or anything like that. You can see recipes have now been created and we have the eight ball tanzanite, tanzanite block and tanzanite from smelting tanzanite ore. Absolutely beautiful that we have this already now as well. And I mean, that's pretty awesome already. Right, before we tackle the assets, let's actually just for the sake of argument, run our data gen here over again. And what you will find is that, oh, what is this? An error 
Yes, so this error appears if you have a duplicate. Now, what does that mean? Well, because we have the recipe right here that is called tanzanite block JSON, right? We have this right here, but we also have this right here. We have the same block right here. And that is an issue because if you have duplicates, then it's not going to work. Then you can, as you can see, do some stuff with Gradle. I personally have not that much experience with Gradle, so I don't know how to basically deal with this, like add a duplicate strategy. So what I basically do is I just delete one of the recipes and that is going to be my custom made one or the one made manually because we don't need it. And then in theory, we should be able to run this again. So if this error ever comes up saying, oh, we have like doubling handling, it should literally say in, in writing what the issue is, like what JSON file is duplicate. So you should have no issues whatsoever, just deleting that and then it should work, no worries. Right, and now the assets and the models and stuff like that. So in the data gen, we're gonna make a new class mod model provider, and that is going to extend the fabric model provider, this one right here, and this will implement two classes or two methods rather, and that is the generate block state models and the item models. We also want the constructor here, and let's just immediately add this to this fabric data generate add provider mod model provider colon colon new. There you go. And then this, how do we use this? It's actually very, very straightforward. I will show this with one block and one item and the rest, hopefully you'll be able to figure out on your own because it really isn't that complicated. I'm I'm genuinely hoping that this is going to be okay. If you have any like special blocks that are like super special. So for example, something like the lamp block, that one I would probably say you probably should just keep it manually in the models and block states folder because honestly writing a custom generator for that if you have only have one block of those I don't think it's really necessary anyway we're going to use the parameter here again block state model generator dot register and you can see these are all of the different things that we can basically you know make custom torches custom pressure plates a plant part, a potted azalea bush, apparently. Um, and we can also do cube all model texture pool here. Here we want to use, well, let's do the jumpy block. That's going to be fine. And that is it. This is going to generate the block states JSON file, the model JSON file, and the island model file for this particular block. That is absolutely amazing. This is probably by far one of the easiest things I've ever seen in my entire life. And I am incredibly happy that this is now added to Fabric because, man, that makes it a whole lot easier to do everything basically. And then for the item one, well, it's pretty much the same thing. Item model generator dot register mod items dot. Let's take the eight ball here. And we're just gonna say models dot generated because in this case it is a generated model. And we can also take a look at the other models. So in theory, you know, if you have slabs or something like that, you can literally also use those. There is also the handheld, for example, for the swords and stuff like that. So that also works. I mean, I don't even know what else to say. That is literally how easy it is. If we now run data gen, we're going to have the block states JSON file for the jumper block, the model, the item model, and the block model, and the item model for the eight ball, all generated automatically, like with one click. And how easy it is, is it to change this, you know, to just like duplicate this, change it to all of our blocks, and then add this. It's a lot, e lot easier in this case than, with, you know, copying over this guy and then, you know, another sapling and another wood. It's, yes, 100%. And like I said, sometimes you just need to basically take a look at the register methods over here. There are a bunch of them. So, you know, for example, you know, if I have a pressure plate, you would use this one. If it's parented, you would have to use this one. You with custom texture, also very interesting. Access rotated would be the one for the wood and stuff like that. Uh, you know, once again, just be open to experimentation and try it out. But under generated assets, we now have block says jumpy block JSON file. And would you look at this? It looks exactly the same as we've written it. Absolutely amazing. Block also here looking for a jumpy block in the block textures folder under tutorial mode. Absolutely amazing. And then same with the item, the eight ball just looks for the eight ball texture and the jumpy block refers back to the block model JSON file absolutely amazing so fabric data gen is an absolute win and well then now in theory once again if you were on this again what are you gonna get exactly you're gonna get the duplicate error over here that we've already talked about because we now have the duplicate json files in the block states and the block model json files so in our where well, we basically made them ourselves we're just going to delete this so let's just get rid of the this was the jumpy block yes and the jumpy block here as well 
There you go. And then also the eight ball item here as well. And that should basically fix that as well. So if we were to run this again, then it's going to generate, even though, you know, everything basically stays the same because we've already generated all of those files. But just for the sake of argument, let's run it one more time. There you go. You can see, you know, not, nothing new was written. Nothing stale was removed. So that is all great. And we can now go to our run client. And let's just say for the sake of argument, Let's go into the game and see if our 8-ball, our jumpy block, the, the loot table, and the recipes all work. All right, so we find ourselves in Minecraft again, and let's just see. So first of all, very nice to see that the jumpy block and also the 8-ball, well, both seem to work totally fine. So that is very good indeed. So everything still seems to be working. Let's get a crafting table out, and let's see if we can craft some, well, I mean, an 8-ball, basically. And that will pretty much will show us whether or not everything here works. So let's go like this. I believe it was this way around. There we go. We can craft an 8-ball, and we should also be able to, yep, get a block of tanzanite and get the tanzanite back. Absolutely amazing. I mean, I, I mean, I don't even know what to say. Fabric Data Gen is an absolute win. As always, of course, all of the code is in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and see you next time. So, yeah.